Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Burnsville. We're delighted that you're here on an August summer day and fall is just around the corner. We're all, I know, we're uh, looking forward to some fall weather. There are a few things that we want to mention this morning. First of all, if you're a first time guest at First Baptist, we'd love for you to fill out a guest card and then just place that in the offering plate so we can get to know you and maybe you can get to know us. There's a couple things that we want to highlight this morning. The, the youth are going to hit the river after church at uh, Cane River at Sally McCoy's. So they're going to have a great time. After church today, the children will be decorating cookies and having a, a preschool uh, get together uh, for all children and decorating cookies. So after after the service today, that'll be in the fellowship hall. Then we'll be having table talk with the pastor next Sunday, August 20 the, uh, 27th. So make plans to stay a little bit longer and we'll discuss our experience um, in worship next Sunday. Uh, that's about all I have in the way of announcements. There's several things that are listed in the bulletin that I won't take time for you to read, but, but just take note of all the things that's happening in September. A lot of things uh, that are happening we'd love for you to be a part of. At this time, we would like to ask all our youth and all of our children uh, to come forward for our back to school blessing. So let me, let me ask all of the children and the youth to come forward from preschool all the way to college. We'd like for you to come forward. And as they're making their way forward, you'll find this blessing, back to school blessing, that's an insert in your bulletin. Please uh, take that out and get it handy. We have a back to school gift for the, all the students. Isn't this a wonderful group? Yeah. And before we get too far along, I want to take a moment and recognize and share some appreciation to the teachers, all the teachers that are headed back to school. Would you stand? Yeah, there we go. All right. Thank you. And I see some smirks from retired teachers. <laughs> and that's not fair. <laughs> so if you have your blessing handy, we're going to do this in unison. As you get it ready, let's share the blessing together. As we head back into our classrooms, may you go forth fully convinced of our love and your capacity. May you be the head and not the tail, leading others and yourself on a path of flourishing. May your roots go down deep into God's soul so that you will bear the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. May you remember your people, where you come from, and find your place of belonging. May you become even more fully of who you were always meant to be this year. We delight in you, darling. We pray that you would sow seeds of life and hope wherever you find yourself, cultivating a harvest of shalom. May you be prepared for every good work that lies ahead of you. May your mind be clear and engaged, your memory sharp, 
your wisdom beyond your years. May you ask for what you need without fear or shame. May you be safe, beloved child, protected from anything that seeks to steal, kill, or destroy in any measure. When you are afraid, may you feel our love wrapped around you and take heart. When disappointments or disasters come, and they will, may you find the depths of the resilience we already see in you and rise, rise, rise again. May you do what is right and good and kind and just, no matter what everyone else might do. Don't submerge your true self into the dreams, plans, behaviors, or agendas of others. Bring your full beloved self to these days, knowing you are created in the image of God. We pray that you would be a blessing to your teachers and the school staff, and we pray that they in turn would see and affirm you in the fullness God has created. We pray for good friendships that will sharpen and delight you. We pray you would have eyes to see the lonely ones. May you have many opportunities to practice being both brave and kind. Beloved child of God, we send you out in the power and peace of love itself, prepared and anointed, knowing you walk upon steady ground. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God and Mother of us all. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And parents, uh, keep the prayer handy as you travel throughout the year. As we continue in prayer this morning, I would like us to focus on this quote from Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. We must discover the power of love, the redemptive power of love, and when we do that, we will make of this old world a new world, for love is the only way. Let's pray. God of particularity, you know us intimately, honestly, as individuals, as communities, as people with histories different and shared. You do not always call us down the same paths. Teach us how to reckon with a freedom that is not one size fits all. Meet us in our specific privileges, powers, gifts, and liabilities that we might find our way and support for one another. Where there is harm and hurt, grant your healing. Where there is injustice and corruption, establish your justice and honor. Where there is hunger, suffering, harm to any child, give us resolve to respond as people glad to do your will. In all things, teach us to love each other as you have loved each one of us. Help us to place our hands in your hands and in the hands of each other that we might walk together and work together until our nightmares are ended and your dream for us and all your creation is realized on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. 
Our opening song is found in the bulletin. It's called, She Came to Jesus. Please stand in body or spirit. Please pray with me. Thank you for moments like this one where we gather as friends and neighbors who are more like family. Help us to have gratitude for all the gifts that are ours. We are reminded of the importance of giving and sharing as Im images of devastation fill our screen from Maui, where members of our family are suffering. Help us to be your presence in this world by the way we live, talk, and the way we share. Thank you for your healing presence, and may your healing presence be felt in every hurting place. We ask and pray in Christ's name. Amen.
I'd like to ask our children to come forward with their time with Aaron. Yeah, you do? Okay, so let's say... She did, and did you like it? Yeah? Very cool sound. That sounds like a nice surprise. Are surprises always good? Always? Okay. Sometimes bad. Why, Juliet? What, what might be a bad surprise? You're getting in trouble. That would be a bad surprise. What if you are in class one day and the teacher says, pop quiz, and you weren't ready for a quiz? Would that be a bad surprise? Yeah. What if you're sitting on the toilet and you suddenly realize there's no toilet paper? <laughs> would that be a bad surprise? Yeah. No, that wouldn't be good, would it? There are some surprises that aren't very good, aren't there? That was very silly. That was silly of me to say that, wasn't it? Especially in church, right? <laughs> well, I had to make my point. You had to understand that not all surprises are good, okay? But our lesson today, there's a few things that happen in our story today with the Canaanite woman. And I got to tell you, this scripture made me kind of uncomfortable. I really wasn't sure how I was going to handle talking to you guys about a woman who asked Jesus for help. And it seems that he ignored her. Was that something you would expect from Jesus to ignore someone who asks for help? No, I wouldn't expect that either. So it, it is weird, Holt. It is. It makes me kind of uncomfortable to think about that because that's not who I think of when I think of Jesus. And so sometimes unexpected things happen, right? But this woman asked Jesus for help, and she asked him to help her daughter, who wasn't very, doing very well. And he seemed to ignore her. And then, at least... What we hear is it sounds like he might have said something that wasn't even very nice. I saw some expressions and some faces here. We wouldn't expect Jesus to say something not very nice either. Jesus is usually nice. And you know what? I, my thoughts, this is me, I think maybe it was interpreted a little differently than what might have really happened. That's just my thought here. But... I have a feeling Jesus was probably noticing this woman all along and contemplating what she was asking for. But you know what she did? She was persistent. And she kept asking Jesus for help. And do you know why she did? Because she had faith in him. If I told you that what was in here was a good surprise, would you believe me? Yeah? Why would you believe me? Because I'm an adult. You know, sometimes not all adults have nice things, though. They might have bad surprises. So, in my bag... Or silly surprises. Or silly surprises, yes. You never know with me, Holt. So, first I want to show you something that's in this little box. Can you look at 
those? Little tiny seashells. Do you want to pass those down so everybody can see? Those are little tiny itty bitty seashells. Do you know where seashells come from? From the beach, that's right. They're in the ocean. How do they get there? Sometimes they do, you're right. But sometimes those shells also get washed on the beach. And those shells are formed by little tiny creatures called mollusks. Kind of a silly word. But they form these shells because of the way God created them. Their bodies start to form this stuff that forms these shells. And as the mollusk starts to grow, you know what happens to the shell? The shell starts to grow too until eventually the shell might become big. You can pass that down. So what's really neat about those shells yeah, those shells are shared by other creatures. Once the mollusk, which is kind of like a slug or a snail, once it dies eventually, do you know what goes in those shells? Hermit crabs. So, you're exactly right. Crabs make a home out of that. Now, an, a little itty bitty crab would need this is a home. And it might look at that big shell and say, ooh, I want that for my next house, right? It might want that big one. But is it ready for that big one yet if it's the size of this shell? No. So that hermit crab might ask for something really big and cool, and it might not get it right away, right? It might be a little later when the time is right. And that's a lot of what Jesus teaches us in this scripture, is that Jesus might know what's best for us, even if we don't know what's best for us. We might think we're ready for that big, cool shell, but we might not be ready for it yet. Or he might need us to ask him and to have faith in him, like the Canaanite woman did. So. In my basket is something you get to take with you. You know what? My surprise is in here, and you get to take it with you. But you have to be, have faith that what I have in here is something you're going to want. Do you have faith that what I have in here is something you're going to want? You don't? <laughs> what if? So Barrett doesn't know me just yet, so he... He might not trust that what I have in here is a good surprise. So who has faith that what's in here is going to be a good surprise? Do you girls want to come here? Come here. Go ahead. Stick your hand in there and pull something out. What does it feel like? Seashells. Seashells. Go ahead. Take them out. Oh, look at that. I have a bucket full of seashells here, and you all can have a few. Would you like some seashells? Yeah. And you know, when you look at these seashells, I want you to remember. Yeah, go ahead. You know what I really like? Lily just asked if she could have a seashell, just like the Canaanite woman asked and had faith. You can have three, that's okay. So, Barrett, would you like a seashell now? Yeah? Okay. Here you go. You can have more than one if you'd like. All right. Okay, you can have two today. That sounds good. That's so nice. So is this a good surprise? Yeah. Is it what you expected? No, you didn't expect this today. You didn't expect to get seashells in church today, did you? No. But that is silly. But you know what's good about these seashells, Holt? Now when you see these, you know what I want you to remember? I want you to remember to have faith and trust that Jesus is going to give you what you need. And that if you ask him and you don't give up, 
You might just get something that you weren't expecting, and it might just be great. Can you remember that? All right, so if you'll hold your seashells still for a second, we're going to say a prayer, and then you can take your seashells back to your seat, okay? Thank you, no. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this day, and we thank you for reminding us that sometimes we don't always get what we want, but we still might get something great by having faith in you. In your name. Good morning. Our reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word, so his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Word of the Lord.
Thank you, ladies. I did hear through the grapevine that when the men get their act together, they would be allowed to rejoin the choir. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how long that takes. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you listen to the text carefully, it brings to the surface a lot of questions. Was Jesus having a bad day? Did Jesus have biases against certain people? Did this Canaanite woman catch Jesus on a bad day? Or in the words of Holt, this just seems kind of weird. <laughs> That's right. It's interesting because unlike Mark, Matthew uses the term Canaanite. Canaanite to describe this woman. It's interesting because the term Canaanite is a more historic term. When someone heard the term Canaanite, it was a term that had a lot of baggage. <clears throat> it was clear that Matthew was referring to this woman's ethnicity. Everybody understood Matthew in the first century. And he understood when he was writing this gospel, he was intentional about calling this woman a Canaanite. We do know that the Canaanites were an ancient enemy of the Israelites. And they were supposed to, you remember, drive all the Canaanites out of the promised land 1400 years before this gospel was written. The Canaanites were pagan people. They worshiped false gods that they crafted with their own hands. Matthew is referring to this woman as a Canaanite because he wants people to understand she was one of those. She was one of those. And despite all of these obstacles, this woman comes to Jesus saying, have mercy. Have mercy on me. You notice she uses, O oh Lord, son of David. My daughter is severe, severely oppressed by a demon. And even though she lived far away, even though she was an outsider, she had heard about this one that was to come, the one who would usher in a different kind of kingdom. I'm so sure that this woman had exhausted all of her resources. That's what most mothers do when their babies or their children are suffering, they become desperate for a cure for someone they love. And she had heard perhaps just enough about Jesus to call him Lord, son of David. I think for me, I, I think Matthew is making a statement about people on the fringes. The, the somewhat mysterious thing here is how Jesus responds to her. Yeah, weird is <laughs> a pretty accurate analysis. You don't see Jesus responding this way or not responding at all to someone who's in front of him. But when Jesus does respond, he says, well, you know, my mission is to the Jews. I love the way Clarence Jordan, who founded 
Quantania Farm in America, Georgia, paraphrases this text in the Cotton Patch Gospels. I recommend everybody have a copy of the Cotton Patch Gospels for your own reference, but this is the way Clarence Jordan paraphrased the Cotton Patch Gospel, this text, in South Georgia. He writes, Jesus left there and arrived in the region of Dalton, Calhoun. Then a black woman from those parts came up and started pleading with him. Please, sir, help me. My daughter is, is badly demon-possessed. But he didn't answer her a word. Then his students came along and advised him, tell her to scram because she's making too much noise. He replied, I was sent only to white needy people. But she came and humbled herself and said, sir, please help me. He answered, it, it isn't right to take the bread from the children and throw it to the puppies. She said, yes, but even so, sir, the puppies do get the scraps from the master's table. And then Jesus said to her, ma'am, you've got a lot of faith. You may have whatever you want. And her daughter was healed from that instant. Honestly, I, I don't know why Jesus ignores this woman. I have no clue, honestly, why Jesus reacted the way he did to her. But for me, that doesn't really seem to be the point. Maybe the point is, for me, to find the blind spots I have in my own life. You know, those moments when, um, when I think I'm better than someone else because I'm a little more educated or because um, I grew up a white male in the South. Maybe this text is to help me find those moments in my life when I think I'm better. When I think I have more answers. When I think I've lived a better life and that somehow that good things belong to me. I love what Jonathan Swift once wrote, and, and you remember he wrote in the early 1700s. He wrote this in the early 1700s. We have just enough religion to make us hate, but not enough to make us love one another. Sounds like he just woke up in the 21st century. The Methodist uh, bishop that I talk about all the time here, and y'all seem to have forgiven me for spending all those years in the Methodist tradition, but I love Will Willeman, and he says he had two conversations one time one with the rector of a downtown Episcopal church and the other with a Southern Baptist pastor. What, what a contrast. <laughs> and he said they said the same things. They, they said the same things, but they said them a lot differently. Willeman said that he knew that the Episcopal rector 
that is church, welcomed gays and lesbians into their fellowship. And so he asked the rector, do you, uh, do you get any resistance uh, to, to them being uh, at, your, your, at your church? And he said, resistance? I suppose so. That's part of the job, isn't it? And after all, uh, he said, they weren't my idea. They're not my group. And Willeman said, well, what do you mean? He said, uh, well, I, I mean uh, by that just what I meant when one of our members came to me to complain. Uh, why you want to have those people in our church? And I asked him, I want to have them. Why on earth do you think I want them? Their presence here in this church is not my idea. I didn't invite them. Why on earth would I invite them? Let the record show that I didn't invite you either. <laughs> Why on earth would I have invited you? <laughs> Let's get this straight, he said, once and for all. This is God's church. Not mine. Certainly not yours. This is God's idea of a good time. God's idea of a fun bunch of people. Later, Willeman was asking the Baptist, Southern Baptist pastor, he said, uh, the Southern Baptist pastor said, do you know what for me is the most comforting passage in all the scripture right now? Controversy seems to follow the Southern Baptist Convention, you know. But he said, it's right there in the Gospel of John where Jesus says, I am going to prepare a place for you because my Father's house, there's many rooms. And, and it baffled Willem, and he said, comforting Yes, it's comforting, he said. Now, we usually read this text when somebody dies. But it ought to be read as a comforting word at almost every church meeting. He goes on to say, now, too many people in my denomination want a smaller church with fewer rooms. They want a room just big enough to hold them and their close friends in faith. But Jesus has promised that his father's house is, is a great big house. One with lots and lots of rooms. And the pastor said, to me, that's a great comfort. In a time when so many people want to scale down the church. At a time when many people want to scale down the church. Now I'm going to tell you folks something you already know. It's so easy for us to feel superior. because of whatever thing it is that we didn't have anything to do with. We didn't have much to do with most everything, you know, like the color of a person's skin, their nationality, maybe even education, what part of town you live in, 
And nowadays, you know, some people can really feel good about themselves based on their voter registration. It's a new thing that started happening. <laughs> a thing of superiority. Isn't that why bumper stickers and flags have become so popular? We're proud of it. We're proud of what we are. We want the whole world to know who we are. And we know what these things do. We know what they do. They divide us and tear us apart because as far as we can tell, we don't think everybody's included to the party. Just people like me. You know, we all know the seriousness of the day in which we live. I was reminded by Jesse um, out in the garden one day. Jesse is a friend of ours and serves in Liberia. And Jesse helped me one day. He, um, he said to me, uh, uh, Tommy, I was walking uh, on the square. This black guy walking in Burnsville. You don't, you don't see that. <laughs> you don't see that very often in Burnsville. A black guy walking in town, which is risky enough. And he said, I passed the Baptist Association. He said, I stood there a moment. He said, Baptist. I like Baptist. And he said, I went in. And I said, well, Jesse, I don't even go in there. <laughs> I just reel with it. I don't go in that place. They don't, they don't see things the way I do. But Jesse said, I went in there. And I said, well, Jesse, <laughs> you make me sick. <laughs> I didn't say that. I said, uh, how did that go? I'm just curious, man, how did that go? He said, well, they welcomed me. He said, in fact, they invited me back for the evening where everybody was. I said, you, you didn't go, did you? Yeah, he, he went. He said, they Baptist? They see nothing wrong with their Baptist? You're Baptist? Yeah, Jesse. But I stood there in, um, in the garden, and I thought for a moment, you know, about my ego, and I thought for a moment in all, in all honesty, I think sometimes I'm part of the problem. Could I be that vulnerable with you today? That I thought for a moment I'm part of the problem. And then I read this text. And I realized I have some blind spots in my heart that are not helpful. And I know the condition and the state in which we find ourselves living. And I think we need all, all of us, not just me, to make sure that our blind spots are removed. Because I'm pretty sure that the people down at the Baptist Association, although they preach a different gospel than I do, they, they preach a different gospel there. And I don't agree with it. And I don't like the hate-filled stuff that I'm hearing from some of, not just Baptist. 
But I know at the core of who I am that God loves everybody. And just because I've wrapped up my theology in a different package, that doesn't make me better. It doesn't make me superior. And I know if we're going to have a chance to keep living on this planet together, we've got to be different. We've got to love people we don't even like. We've got to love people we don't agree with. Their bumper stickers, their flags, their arrogance. But that's not really who they are, is it? That's the package it's been delivered in. <laughs> That's not who they are. That's the package it's been delivered. So, you know what, Jesus here? You don't look too good in this text. Well, you didn't start off good. We all agree on that one, don't we? But I also think it's true, you know, that's not where you start. Could somebody say amen to that? It's not where you start. It's where you finish. It's where you end up. And I like where Jesus ends up. I love where Jesus ends up. You know, maybe he said to her, I'm sorry, ma'am, I had a misconception. I thought God sent me for the insiders. Just to have a moment. And thank you that you've helped expand my ministry. Jesse, in the garden help me see the blind spot I have in my own heart in my own life and I'm thankful that Jesus ends up where Jesus ends up I love what Brian McLaren once wrote he said Jesus doesn't dominate the other Avoid the other. I do that. Colonize the other. Intimidate the other. Demonize the other. Marginalize the other. He incarnates into. He incarnates into the other. Joins the other in solidarity. Protects the other. Listens to the other, serves the other, even lays down his life for the other. Who do you want to be? Man, I've been praying that all of us will be the people like Jesus. And I'm praying always that this is a place where we end up like Jesus. Never dominating the other, avoiding the other, colonizing the other, intimidating the other, demonizing the other. May we too incarnate into the other. Join the other in solidarity. Protect the other. Listen to the other. Serve the other. And by the grace of God, may we lay down our lives for the other. You know, I don't, I don't care where you come from. I don't care what kind of history you have. I don't care about anything external. I think there's a place for you 
where Jesus is. I hope this is the kind of place that welcomes everybody. Our closing song is hymn number 320, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Will you please rise in body or spirit? Please pray with me. It must be so frustrating for you, oh God, to see what we've done with all of your creation, how we label, demonize, how we have allowed religion and other things like politics to puff us up. We're so full of ourselves. Help us to be humble people 
And as we look into the eyes of our brothers and our sisters, help us to remove the religion that has puffed us up just enough to make us hate. Help us to lay it down. To look into the eyes of another and to see them too as a beloved child loved deeply by you. And how we long for this to be such a place no matter who walks in the door, may this be a place of your love. We plead with you. Heal our lives. Heal this land. Heal our hearts. Amen.